Alright, I'm gonna start with just a simple scene here, including three primitive objects. One of them is polygonal, the rest of them are still parametric. And with this cube selected, I'm gonna go to Simulate Hairs Objects at Hair. Then I can quickly go to this Hair Objects Guide tab and switch its root parameter to Polygon Area. This is gonna allow me to increase the root count up to some reasonable amount. I'm gonna put the value of 215 here and then go to this Notes Hair tab to switch the root parameter from Auto to As Guides. Next, I'm gonna need to bring some geometry here. So under this Notes Generate tab, I'm gonna switch its type from None to Triangle. And it looks like at this point, these hairs are just too thin for my taste. So let's quickly fix this by going to this hair material and increasing its root and tip values right under the thickness channel. The values of something around 7 and 1 would be fine for me. And eventually you should get this similar picture to what you can see here. So, and now it looks like it's a good time to introduce the hair proximity node. And you can find it by going to new node hair general. So in this node is all about detecting the nearest hair to the point you are interested in. And of course, you not only can detect that hair or its segment, but you can also use it in pretty much any way you want. And right now, I'm gonna give you a brief example of the way you can do this. First, I'm gonna connect this hair proximity node to the hair object itself using their object ports. This should help me get rid of this arrow when it indicates yellow. And next, I need to give this node the information about the particular point I'm interested in. To do this, I'm gonna use the center of this platonic object in this case. And I'm just connecting it to the hair proximity node using its global position output port. And it looks like at this point, this node knows everything it needs to know. So let's quickly check what we have right now. And to do this, I'm gonna connect this index output port to the result node. And it looks like it really works. It simply gives me the internal index of the nearest hair point to that platonic object. And let's go ahead and use this information in some way. I'm gonna quickly add the hair points node here, add its index input port, and link them to the corresponding ports of hair object node and hair proximity node. So that way this hair points node will give us the certain point position. Of course, now we need to transfer this information to the corresponding object, which we don't have yet. So I'm gonna grab that sphere in the object manager and drag it to the Expresso canvas. And next, I need to connect these nodes together using the sphere's global position input. You can see this little sphere has already jumped into some certain point in space, and when I move this platonic around, it seems like it's tracking its position, though its placement is not quite correct. And it's all about this mode parameter, which should be set to dynamic guides. And now it's tracking this data the way more accurately, and you can simply tell it by the way it moves at this point. So next, let's go ahead and try to interact with this hair points in dynamic manner. To do this, I'm gonna add this add force input port to this hair points node. This should bring this new add force parameter here. And I'm gonna increase its value along y-axis, just to apply that much of force to the chosen hair point. Well, and that's basically it. Just keep in mind that you can detect and use the nearest hair root to the point of interest using this hair proximity node. And if you really like these Expresso tutorials, you can find the whole course devoted to Expresso available on the App Store. Just type in Expresso or follow the link below.